a new item. We had a new item last week. We've canned that. We have a new item this week called Something for the Weekend, which I've just named in the last few minutes. And it's myself and Owen's recommendations of things to, uh, that we've come across that we think you might enjoy. And actually, in one instance, the last lot is something you should probably avoid. So for me, the first article was... Um, a really in-depth piece of journalism on golf.com. It was written by Alan Chipnock. It's a tragic story in so many ways of the murder of a young professional golfer, uh, Celia Barquin Aritzamena, a Spanish golfer who was murdered last year. She was out playing uh, a practice round in solo and uh, encountered a homeless man at some point during the uh, round and was viciously raped and murdered. It's a tragic story. Um, and there are so many parallels, as Alan Chipman, over the course of the piece, draws between the small village where um, this young woman uh, came from in Spain and the village where she was ultimately living and the uh, societal issues that um, both countries had encountered to, to different degrees. The uh, drug crime and uh, weapon crime of the US is what it boiled down to, essentially. And it's a really tragic uh, story, but a really great read, a brilliant piece of journalism and I couldn't recommend it highly enough. It's Alan Chipnook on golf.com. We will, by the way, uh, put all of these pieces out on our uh, social channels as well over the course of the afternoon. So that's my recommendation. Um, it's a tough read, but it's my recommendation for you to read at some point over the weekend. Owen? I'm starting off on a fairly basic level. Uh, you know how excited I am for the return of the Allianz League. I just think Mayo versus Ross Common tomorrow evening. We want to see. It's on television. It's on air sport tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock. The fact that it is the first game in Division 1 of the weekend probably adds a bit of uh, impetus to it. The fact that James Horn is back adds a bit to it. Mm. The fact that it's McHale Park on a Saturday night, uh, which was, of course, where Mayo had their first game last year, the very same day that Johnny Sexton scored the famous drop goal in Paris. And myself and my fellow Kerry uh, supporters got into, you know, uh, a bit, bit of a war of words with the Mayo fans on that night. But I think over the course of a year, I think my tensions have cooled a small bit and I can accept that uh, the, the atmosphere in McHale Park tonight will be a positive one. And and Anthony Cunningham, of course, that's the other element of, uh, of Ross Common's year this year that's going to be extremely intriguing as to see how, how they perform. They always play a relatively good style of football, and Mayo, of course, tend to throw caution to the wind whenever possible. And the talent available tonight, first night of the league, between Paddy Dirk and Lee Keegan and Aidan O'Shea, it's going to be a good one. It's just, I think the fact that we've had an extra month, and from a Mayo perspective, it's been seven months, really, since they played uh, a game that we've had on, on TV, so greatly looking forward to it. Maybe the enthusiasm will wear off after a couple of weeks, but I don't think so. I think the National League is fantastic, so Mayo against Ross Common tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Uh, my other recommendation for the weekend is the Peter Crouch, that Peter Crouch podcast, which is uh, up on the BBC. It's probably the most non-BBC thing that uh, I've listened to. It's Peter in the company of a couple of other BBC presenters, including Tom Fordyce, who I believe wrote his book. Uh, it's very giving. It's an ongoing series. I only came to it very late. It's about but uh, it's been running for, the, I think, the best part of about eight or nine months. Uh, recurring characters, uh, characters, different themes, gets into like things like tactics, managers, nicknames for uh, former managers. Fabio Capello, uh, Capello was the most interesting nickname that came up for me over the course of it, and the lads were sort of guessing as to what Fabio's nickname was. Postman Pat, which as it turns out is a <laughs> <laughs> fantastic comparison. It's full of laughs, and uh, Peter Crouch is very giving. He's very funny, and I do highly recommend. I, it, it's something for the weekend is the name of the item. That's something probably that's going to side you through uh, before the, uh, in, right into the summer. Before I go into my last thing, I want to skip to my thing to avoid this weekend. Uh, for any American football fans, don't watch the Pro Bowl. It's one of the more pointless sporting events in the world. It's Sunday at 8 o'clock. don't know why I've told you the time, because you shouldn't watch it. Uh, it's just pointless for a number of reasons. You can't really create the same conditions as you can in basketball or smaller team sports with the sort of intrigue of putting all-stars from different teams together in this sort of super team because everything is so specialised into positions and you've got to put months and months and sometimes years of work to actually have an effective uh, and operating offence or defence in the NFL. So it's pointless and also the contracts in the NFL are terrible to the players and if you get injured you could ruin your career. So there's nothing to see here. 8 o'clock on Sunday, don't watch it. Ditto for the FA Cup for me this weekend. There's one clearly small um, asterisk beside this and that's the game tonight. I'd say do watch that, but after that, forget about the FA Cup for the weekend. Fourth round, normally stacked full of sort of matchups where there's potential sort of giant killers along the way. This one really, it's hard to see, looking at the matchups actually, what uh, uh, giant killing actually even sort of represents. So for me, FA Cup, give it a skip. Okay, I'm finishing on this one. It's a piece that was on ESPN.com this week. It's called Street Beefs, and it's a piece written by Nancy Andrews for the website. The photographer is here, though, uh, uh, Brian Fink Redux. 
uh, is, uh, of Redux is the, the, the most important part of this because the, the photography in this piece is absolutely sensational uh, as we can hear. So basically this is a fight club set up by a guy called Chris Scarface Wilmore in Harrisonburg, Virginia. The fight club takes place in his backyard. Uh, it's part of his guns up or guns down, gloves up crusade. Uh, so last year this yard hosted upward of 180 fights and it has a YouTube channel boasting more than half a million subscribers and 142 million plus views. Now I would warn that if you're of the, the faint of heart, uh, the videos might not be for you and we are going to show you uh, this fight club. So this is street beefs. This is, what, we, what are we going to show you here? Uh, we're going to show you um, Italian Tyson is the name of a guy who's fighting here. Have a look at this. Street Beach, we got a final MMA match for y'all. I think it'll be a treat. In this corner, we got Emilio. He's 1-0 in Satan's backyard. And in this corner, fan favorite Italian Tyson fighting his first MMA match. He's 3-0 right now. Be safe, fellas. Fight on. So this is an MMA contest that takes place. There is a uh, boxing contest as well. It's not bare knuckle from anything I can gather. They're either uh, set up for an MMA bout or for a boxing bout. I'm not sure how qualified the referee is. Nobody makes a profit here. They're here to fight, to release stress and anger as the author. So uh, Italian Tyson is the guy on top here. He's interviewed in the piece. He says, I was bullied when I was younger, and that's when I started to learn how to box and do martial arts because I wanted to not get bullied anymore. I was in sixth grade. I was a chubby kid in class, and a lot of people were just picking on me about my weight. A couple of kids would jump on me, but I was going to the restroom or to the locker room. I just snapped, I stood up for myself, and a lot of kids stopped messing with myself. Uh, after that, that's the end of the fight there. It's, uh, it's an incredible piece, as I say, Nancy Andrews uh, writes it. And ju there's just one line here that really stands out to me. She says, they come to release stress and anger or to pursue an improbable dream of being discovered online and embarking on careers as professional fighters. A few say fighting is simply in their nature, but they almost all talk about the test in the ring, how much they respect one another's willingness to fight for no money, the punches in the face, the focus, the pain, the adrenaline, and more than anything else, the calm aftermath of it all surprising bond they feel with their opponent. It's one of the best sports pieces I've seen this week and it all takes place in a back garden in Virginia. But if there are already two million YouTube views of that, that means there's going to be cash flowing around this Absolutely. pretty quickly. It probably Absolutely. is. I, I would like to know what exactly Chris Scarface Wilmore is making off this. So there's no admission fee charged, but as you say, the amount of money that they're swindling surely from YouTube has to go somewhere and it might be into Scarface's back pocket. But these guys just want to uh, rock up and have a fight. Not particularly my cup of tea. Uh, they get the occasional noise complaint, uh, but overall the police kind of uh, don't touch this thing. It's only a matter of time before the tickets are hiked up by five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Could be given back to the community. <laughs> <laughs> Set up another ring somewhere else. Uh, right, that's your something for the weekend. It's